Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we will unlock the book What a Plant Knows, A Field Guide to the Senses. In the 1990s, a young postdoctoral fellow at Yale University was studying plant DNA. He discovered a unique group of genes that helps the plant to determine if it is in the light or the dark. Having already suspected the genes were specific to plants, the finding did not surprise him. However, he later found the same group of genes in a part of human DNA. This later led him to wonder what role such plant-specific genes played in the human body. After much research, the postdoctoral fellow realized that these genes are present in both plants and animals, and are also used to regulate their responses to light. This discovery ignited his interests in the parallels between plant and human biology. He spent much effort in continuing research in this field. He found that while flowers and trees cannot move or talk, they have evolved a highly sophisticated machinery of senses. This unique machinery enables plants to see smell touch remember, and adjust their behavior in response to an ever-changing environment. For example, an elm tree may know if its neighbor is blocking it from the sun in a manner which enables it to find a method to grow towards sunlight. Lettuce could sense if aphids are eating it, similarly enabling it to protect itself by making poisonous chemicals, killing its enemies. This young postdoctoral fellow is Daniel Chamovitz, a famous botanist and author of this book What a Plant Knows, A Field Guide to the Senses. Chamovitz once studied at Columbia University and transferred to the Hebrew University of Jerusalem where he received his Ph.D. in genetics. He served as the chair of the Department of Plant Sciences at Tel Aviv University in Israel and is now the president of Ben Gurion University of the Negev. This book is the brainchild of his years of research. It reveals surprising similarities between plants and humans by comparing how plants and humans sense the environment. Additionally, it provides us a different angle in understanding and appreciating other forms of life. This book is published by Scientific American, the leading brand of popular science magazines in the world. It was widely acclaimed after its publication and was listed as one of the top 10 science books in Amazon for 2012. Next, let's unlock the essence of this book in the following six aspects, plant senses of sight, smell, touch, hearing, proprioception, and memory. Are you ready? Let's now begin our journey to explore the wonder of how plants sense the world around them. Part 1. What a plant sees. First, let's talk about plants' vision. We all know that plants show phototropism. Plants can bow and bend toward light no matter how tiny and dim the light happens to be. This phenomenon suggests that plants can indeed see the light coming from a particular source. So our question is, which part of the plant sees light? Or where are the eyes of a plant? In 1880, Darwin and his son Francis performed a simple experiment and found out the answer to this question. The Darwins set out their experiments on five seedlings in the following way. The first seedling was the untreated specimen of control. The second had its tip pruned off. The third had its tip covered with a light-proof cap. The fourth had its tip covered with a clear glass cap that light could go through. Last, the fifth had its middle section covered by a light-proof tube. Darwin then placed these seedlings in a dark room and lit a gas lamp twelve feet away. A few days later, two seedlings did not bend towards light. These were the second one without the tip, and third one with a light-proof cap covering its tip. The rest showed phototropism. This very simple experiment successfully demonstrates that a plant uses the tip of the shoot to see light. This conclusion profoundly changed the understanding of plants in the scientific community. Unfortunately, over the next few decades, research on plants' vision entered a stagnation period. There had been no breakthroughs until 1906 when tobacco farmers in Maryland in the United States discovered a new strain of tobacco. This strain of tobacco is called Maryland Mammoth. The name tells you just how huge it is. Indeed, this tobacco never seems to stop growing. 